<laughs> now we're live. Now we're live. Okay. There we are. Hopefully I can get him to come out of the box. Yeah. Why? I'm just gonna get off wife. Well, maybe be better. Here we go. Hey! People are joining. Hello everyone. We're out in our greenhouse today for some iguana care uh, videos. Every Wednesday at four we do a Wednesday wisdom and it's just care videos or tips and tricks and Today it's going to be about iguanas. Um, we don't have great internet connection out here, so um, we're going we're gonna to do our best. So hopefully nothing happens. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll find out. We'll roll with the punches. Yeah. Though. That's how we do. But ask your questions along the way about iguanas, and um, yeah, we're going to get started. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So we're going to start, we're going to talk about green iguanas, even though our iguanas aren't green, but they're green iguanas anyways. Um, because green iguanas are a really, really common pet. They're very popular. They're popular. They're all a place. They're not a case. They're not a when you try to buy one in a pet. Um, but there are some things to definitely keep in mind about green iguanas uh, when it comes to their care if you're deciding whether or not you should get one as a pet. Personally, so I have some personal stories about iguanas because um, a green iguana was my first pet reptile that wasn't a lizard or a snake I caught in my backyard. <laughs> and um, I was only, I was 10 years old when I got her and I was obsessed with iguanas. Like I bugged my parents for so long, I read every book I could find, I did tons of research and, um, and it took me like two years to convince them to let me have a pet green iguana. Um, and I had her for 21 years. And she was amazing. I loved her so much. But it's really important to understand what their needs are because they should live 20, 25 years. Um, not five or 10 or eight, you know. They, uh, they can live a very long time. And in order to get them to live their full life and to be a great pet, um, you have to be prepared to, to care for them, first of all, for a long time. Um, and they get really big, so I guess we can just go in here. Yeah, we're gonna show you our see. adult iguana enclosure and the iguanas that live inside. And the iguanas that live inside. Yes. So, you wanna flip a deal? Yeah, here All we right, go. So this is Gus and Chabella that live out here. And again, this is in our, um, we're actually outside of the greenhouse in our fruit cage. Uh, That's the greenhouse. A nice big, um, secure cage for them. Um, it has this pretty fine mesh that not only is going to keep them in, but help keep out predators, rats, and things like that, um, that could become a problem for them. Um, we lock it with a padlock every night. Uh, there's, we go explore in here, see what we've got going on. We've got this nice big tree type thing that we've built. For them to climb on they'll climb on the mesh on the outside uh the inside walls of the the cage um this is kiwi vine actually that's growing up here in the corner provides them with a little bit of shade uh, we've got these cool hammocks that we made for them um with paracord and uh and this this nice soft flexible mesh here so they they'll hang out on here on the sun um, up in the other corner, there's another one that they like to hang out on. Um, we've got their house, which we'll get to in a second. We've got a nice big water dish that they like to go in. And uh, I cleaned it just before um, we started this video because they love to poop in their water. They love to poop in clean water. So sometimes they wait <laughs> for us to come out here and clean the water and then they go poop in it and so you have to clean it again. Um, so, uh, but they do love to go in the water and soak. When we have time, we'll give them an even bigger tub that they can kind of swim around in. Um, we've got their food dish over here on the side that uh, they were fed this morning that had pellets, uh, pelleted iguana food and greens. And that's the white stuff on there is calcium today, but that's all put together by our nutritionist with calcium or vitamin, whatever it needs to be. Um, we've got some ferns over in the corner. Um, they don't really eat those, but it does provide like, you know, another texture or something else going on for them in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'll prop open this, um, their house so we can take a look in there and, um, and say hello to these two. Uh, 
keeping iguanas outside is different than keeping them inside, but green iguanas get very large, as you'll see, and they need to they need to have a lot of space. So unless you have like a spare bedroom or a huge like walk-in closet or something. Yeah, I'm gonna like step out so that I can see you and like show the scale of so this. this. Is Bella. The orange one is Gus Gus and he is about he's probably 11 years old um, and he is a green iguana even though he's orange. It's just an orange phase. Uh, and then Chabella is the one that's kind of gray and that's the female and um, she's, she's fairly typical for coloration of a green iguana. Um, an adult female and she's probably more like 14 I would say probably 14 15 years old we didn't get either of them as babies um, they both came to us from different circumstances I am gonna prop this up so that I can um, I can try also and... hold one it's pretty it's kind of heavy oh so there we go Um, so what you can see in here, we've got kind of a few things going on. Um, we've got a few heaters on the bottom that they can sit on. These are the habitat heaters. Um, and then we've got a couple heaters on the side and we've got only one of them plugged into a constant. Um, the others are plugged into timers. So those heaters won't come on until, uh, until 3.30 in the afternoon and then they go off at 10 o'clock in the morning. And um, the purpose for that is our days are really nice and warm, but our nights get a little bit cool right now. So we just wanna give them a little bit of extra heat um, at night. And they are, they're, they've trained themselves. They're not stupid. Um, <laughs> they, they're pretty smart. And so they figured out that this is where it's warm. And when it cools off outside, they just put themselves in their house. Uh, this house is insulated. It's equipped with several different temperature monitoring devices so that we can always see what the temperature is in there. And we aim to let it not really drop below um, 75 degrees or so. Uh, and, and it's rare that it gets even that low. Um, so they always have access to a really nice warm area. Um, there's Someone wants to know how long iguanas live. So they can live a they can live a long time. Um, I'm not sure what the record is, but I they should be able to live 20, 25, um, probably 30 years uh, if the, if they're provided with the right care. So um, we and we've learned so much about these animals. Like I said, I had my iguana for 21 years, and um, when I got her. This was, again, this was a long time ago. Um, the information about them wasn't what we know today. So I made her a salad every day with her greens and fruits and vegetables, but it was recommended to also sprinkle the top with cat food, um, you know, or feed insects along with it. And we know now that that's really not necessary for green iguanas. Um, what do they eat? 
They so they don't are, eat cat food or insects. What, what's their diet? They're strict herbivores, and they really should eat a diet that's comprised of lots of greens, leafy greens, um, and vegetables, and a little bit of fruit. So we use a pelleted diet here, and then we supplement it with the greens and fruit and vegetables. It's about 60% pellet. Um, and then with those other supplements added on top. Uh, and they, they like it. They do really well on it. They've been growing appropriately. You can see they're, <laughs> they're in great shape. Um, uh, we know a lot more now. We, we knew then when, when I got my iguana. My iguana's name is Blue, by the way. Um, when, we, when I got Blue, we knew that she needed to have UVB lighting. Um, but the UVB lighting options available were slim. Uh, it was, I don't want to tell you the date because then you're going to know how old I am. <laughs> but um, it, Reptisun and the iguana lights and the, the, rep, the reptile UVB lamps had not been around for all that long when I got my first iguana. And um, so there weren't a lot of options. The output wasn't terribly high, so the distance they could travel away from it and still be receiving that UVB benefit wasn't, um, it wasn't a very far distance. Um, and, and, you know, she did really well. She had an outdoor habitat as well as her indoor habitat. Um, it's a, that's a good way to kind of put things together, be able to have some options for them. But, um, now we have so much more that's available to us in regards to research as well as product options. Um, we have UVB lamps that can reach a much further distance. We have heating elements that can come from all different directions. Um, we have more information about their nutritional needs and different options for providing for those needs. So they, they really can live a very long time um, if they're cared for properly. Uh, but, as you can see, I'm going to see if I can get them out. They, I, I caution you about picking an iguana up from the ground, and here's why. We're big and scary to them when we're hovering over top, and so when you reach down at them, they can feel very threatened. So when I, when I reach down, you may see Gus. He's already um, doing a little bit of head bobbing. Yeah, maybe head bobbing a little bit. That's kind of a territorial thing. It can also be a greeting, but, but more of a territory. Um, but you, you might see him like flatten himself uh, laterally so that he's, and then turn to the side to make himself look bigger. Um, he might prepare with his tail as if he wants to whip. And, and that's just because I, when I come down to him from up above, it's kind of scary. So I try to minimize that and not reach down for them too much um, because I don't want to stress him out either. But uh, you might see him look sideways at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> so um, I'm going to try it. If he looks like he's not into it, I'm not going to bug him too much. But I'd like for you to be able to see how big he really is. Um, and I just have to make sure Because looking doesn't... down at him, he doesn't look that big. Yeah. Um, but... Would it be possible for you to maybe, yeah, hold that up while I do this just because I don't want this to fall? Yeah. And smash us. Okay. So here we go. Hey, Gus Gus. Hi, buddy. See how he's kind of going sideways? Um, he can see me better. I look, I'm, so I, I've kind of worked with him to, to show him that when I kind of wave at him like this, I'm, I mean him no harm. <laughs> And so sometimes he'll close his eyes and just let me pet him. Um, that's how I trained my, my iguana blue also. Um, and then he can kind of relax. When you pick him up also, since they are so large, sometimes they'll feel a little unstable in your arms. So he might kick his legs around trying to um, stabilize himself and make sure that he feels like he's in more control. And, uh, and then once I get him out, I'll let Meredith put this lid down so we can just set him up on top. Okay, buddy? But sometimes he'll get a little uneasy because he's just not sure. There we go. Got it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is Gus. And as you can see, he's, he's no, a handsome boy. He's no little guy. He is a handsome boy. Um, but this is a, about typical size for a healthy adult male green iguana. Um, 
I have seen some that are even bigger, and uh, they're, you know, it's not a little animal, so he needs to have a lot of space, um, especially in order to stay healthy, because he needs to be able to move around, use his legs, use his tail, um, wear his toenails down, which he doesn't do enough out here, so they need to be trimmed, um, but they're not, they're not always the most friendly of animals either. So in order to get them to be friendly, you really have to do some work and, uh, and teach them how, to, how you're going to communicate with them, like how I wave to him and he closes his eyes. If he doesn't close his eyes and if he turns himself, you know, real sideways, I don't, I don't push it because I want him to trust that if he's not feeling like being picked up, I'm not going to pick him up. Um, I want him to, to believe that I'm never going to come out here to hurt him and, um, and that he can trust me. So sometimes building that trust with a reptile uh, takes a little longer than it with a dog, you know. Um, but it's totally worth it because they can be really fabulous pets. They just uh, um, they just take some work and dedication. And that's kind of related to so someone had a two part question, but part of it was um, is one uh, sex more aggressive than the other? So I've seen both. Um, I feel like as a kid, I always heard that females were more aggressive than males, so I requested when I got my iguana a male, um, and I thought it was a male, but I was one of those really, really cool kids, and I was in 4-H, and I was given a presentation about my iguana because, like I said, I was obsessed, um, and I introduced her as blue, my male green iguana, and then in front of me and everyone who was watching my presentation, uh, she began laying eggs. So, they're <laughs> not always terribly easy to sex as babies. So that was the um, second part of their question is, is there a way to sex them, and at what point, like at what age can you sex them? There, there, def there, is, there are ways to sex iguanas, and some people find it very easy. Um, I've seen some individuals that just don't give you a really clear indication. Um, as an adult, you can kind of see how bulky his head is and his jowls like right around this area here. Um, that's, that's very typical of a male. Um, big head, big bulky jowls, uh, right here at the base of his tail, like kind of underneath. This will be more swollen in a male. Um, it'll just be a thicker, a thicker area. Yeah, you don't have to really look totally underneath, but just like along this area when you uh when you look at a male you'll see kind of some swelling sometimes and that's the hemipenes in there um there are some uh some femoral pores can you see those pores on his femur there that tend to be a little bit more um, pronounced in a male but sometimes you'll have a female that shows some of these signs <laughs> And you're like, well, I don't really know. If you have two that are the same age, sometimes you can compare them. Um, but I've seen females with, I've seen males with tiny little heads. <laughs> like, boy, that head looks like a female. But the, you know, the, at the base of the tail, it looks like a male. So, um, what age do they start showing those like um, different kind of secondary characteristics? It, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's, with reptiles, it's often not based on age as much as size. And since their size is determined by so many exterior factors um, in the environment, you know, the temperature, their, uh, their food, their nutrition, all of the lighting, all of these things will play a role in how quickly they grow. So um, I would say probably typically year or two size for you know a healthy animal you'd probably be able to see some of these characteristics oh wait hold on it says that it's paused are we back on yet can anyone it says some people are watching but people a couple are... people commented that the video paused uh oh can you guys see us someone say that you can see us if you can see us Hmm. It says I have internet. Um, are we on? 
Someone say yes. Oh, okay, we're getting responses again. Okay, so it paused. I don't know how much of what we just talked about was seen. Um, it might be available when we share this later, but we were just talking about how to sex an iguana and at what age those secondary characteristics show. So maybe we can just do like a quick review since I don't know how much yeah. of that was paused. Okay. So um, it, it depends on their size, really. Um, the larger they get, the more mature they generally are and um, more of those secondary characteristics will kind of show through. Um, but individuals can be different too. You know, I've seen some that don't want to reveal um, until they're quite a bit bigger. Um, and then I've seen some that it's pretty obvious whether it's a male or a female at a pretty young age. Um, they all kind of start looking like females, and then you see more of the, the male secondary characteristics come out. So once you start seeing those, then, um, you know, then you know you have a male. So sometimes it's hard to call a female um, right away because maybe you just have a slow and maturing male, too. Um, so that's, that's kind of a tough one. I, I, as far as their temperament goes, you can see Gus here. Um, he went through a period of time where he was a little bit cranky, uh, not going to lie, and we had to be extremely careful with him. Uh, he also has gone through some time where he does not like men. Um, he and I have always been pretty good friends. And so uh, any men, that, especially men that were hanging out with me, were on his uh, on his list. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, you can be aware of things like that, but... Uh, oh my gosh. Train. Yeah. Bye, train. <laughs> we're just hitting it all today. I know, so many loud this noises. Is a, this is the fun of being live and outside. Yeah. <laughs> um... But I, I had a female green iguana that was, you know, blue was the sweetest thing to anyone. Anyone could touch her or pick her up. A kid, a guy, a girl, it didn't matter. She was totally fine with everything. So um, I, I think a lot of it depends on the individual and also how they're handled. You know, if they're handled regularly, if you've built that trust with them. Um, they're not naturally aggressive. Uh, sometimes we tend to talk about undesirable behavior from animals as aggression like they're being mean to us they want to bite us or whip us or scratch us or something like that and with an animal like this it's not a predator um this is a prey animal actually they're they're preyed upon quite a bit and uh and it's a strict herbivore so they're not really aggressive but they can be um defensive like i said you know when he's down on the ground if i come at him from up above like a great big bird of prey or something like that. He's probably going to whip his tail at me. He might even open his mouth and try to look big. It's not him, like, wishing to harm me. It's him trying to protect himself, um, which is, you know... And that I behavior can do. be seen in males and females. It's not like, oh, definitely oh. this one sex is going to have... Absolutely, absolutely. I would say that um, males probably will have a little bit more of a hormone surge uh, when they become mature than females. And so you might want to watch it during that time, that period in their life, um, where you might see some different behaviors. But, uh, you know, if you, if you maintain a good, healthy relationship with them, then, uh, then I, I don't see that one is necessarily more aggressive than, than another. Cool. So um, we're a little delayed, so is what the <laughs> feedback that we're getting. Um, we knew that the connection out here might be a little bad, so hopefully when it's replayed, it won't be doing all this pausing. Um, but yeah, so we talked about food, we talked about temperament, housing. Um, is there a particular temperature range? So you said their hut can't fall below 75, but what would you say their ideal daytime temperature is? Well, I would give, try to give them a basking site that's getting up near 100 degrees, you know, 90, 90 to 100 um, you want a, a good majority of their habitat to be in the 80s um, and then probably on the cooler side down into the, the mid, mid to low 70s so that they can thermoregulate, have a lot of options. Um, again, it's an animal that's going to need a, a relatively large area. I'm going to try and set him down okay. because he's pretty heavy. Okay, buddy. Sometimes again, once he gets out of my arms, 
she's a little bit less sure and uh, will start showing me these defensive behaviors. Um, but he obviously didn't actually have any problem with me picking him up um, and no problem just sitting with me. He's just, he's heavier than he looks, guys. <laughs> he's a big guy. What's up, Gus Gus? You're so handsome. Um, someone wants to know, um, I'm a little confused by their question. So, um, I guess if, if there's a size difference between a male and a female, can you still put them together? You want to, if you're going to try to cohabitate these animals, have them live together, you need to do it with caution. Um, because it's not necessarily just a size thing, but an individual thing. Okay. Um, we have seen some spats between Gus and Shabella, usually during breeding season. He's all fired up for it. She's not into it. And she'll turn around and tell him. And if he doesn't listen when she says, I don't want to play this game right now, um, then she might have to get physical with him. Uh, so during breeding season, we keep an extra close eye on them and make sure that they're not fighting um, and that he's being a gentleman and that she's uh, not being too rude. Um, so a a every animal really is an individual. You have to really gauge that carefully um, and do a lot of research and know your animal and be prepared to split them up um, because once you start seeing some of these behaviors, you, you may need to separate the two. Um, even if you have two females, I would recommend um, being prepared. I would not recommend housing two males together. Um, generally, generally, males can be a little bit more territorial amongst one another. They'll fight over breeding rights with females. Um, and so you don't wanna force them to do that. Cause again, that's just, that's just stressful. Um, so when we've cohabitated any of our animals, we base it on whether or not that's the best thing for them. And these two get along really well. Again, in breeding season, we keep an, a really close eye on them. But um, apart from one one season that they had a little spat, um, other than that, they, they really haven't had any kind of uh, arguments or anything between them. And someone else has a question. Uh, when it comes to red or blue iguanas, do the females keep the color or do they turn more gray as with the green ones? You know, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't have that much experience with all of those different morphs. Uh, you would probably want to find out from a breeder who's working with them what the, you know, what the adult females look like. Green iguanas, when they're babies, they're just this really bright fluorescent green. Um, and then they tend to become more dull as they age. That's not uncommon amongst a lot of different reptiles. Um, that are really bright in color when they're babies and then they, uh, and then they, they kind of get a little bit more dull as they get older. So, um, but with the orange, as you can see, this male has really retained, uh, a lot of orange color. Also, we're at the end of like the summer season. Um, so sometimes in the winter, he will look a lot more gray too. Um, he's not always quite this orange. Uh, and then again, on a really bright, sunny day, he might be even brighter than this. So I would check with the breeder. Yeah. Um, oh, and then another thing. So I, I don't see this as a question on here, but how do you know when, how big are they when you need to upgrade them to a larger enclosure? Because we have the iguanarium mm -hmm. for juveniles, but mm -hmm. how big are they when they need to be upgraded? Well, um... To, like, their adult size enclosure. You know, you, you would want... You wouldn't want the ratio to be too far off from what we've got right here. So if your animal looks like it's taking up you know, 75% of the, the width of the cage, um, then, and they, and you don't see them being able to move or like turn around really easy and climb around and, and get the exercise and everything. Um, then it might be time to, to upgrade to a new habitat. Uh, and people have a lot of different, um, ways of doing that. When I had my iguana, there were not a lot of commercial iguana products and cages and everything available. So I was building custom cages all the time out of 
um, bookcases and closets and stuff like that. Um, I ended up with a nice big outdoor uh, aviary type cage that she would be in on nice days and then she would come inside. So her indoor enclosure was a little bit smaller than her outdoor cage. Um, but you know, so that's, that's one way if you have the opportunity to do like a nice big outdoor area. Sometimes the inside isn't quite as big, but they're not spending as much time inside or the time inside is sleeping and poor weather and stuff like that. Um, so it's, you know, you, you just have to kind of judge based on your animal's behavior and you know, how much of the cage they're taking up. Um, the iguanarium, I would say, is great for, for juveniles. Um, but once they start, once, once they can reach, you know, from nose to tail across the front of that cage, it's probably time to think about, um, think about getting something a little bit bigger just because, you know, they, there's, there's not a lot of, um, turnaround and runaround space going on. And you don't want to restrict their movement too much. Mm hmm I feel like we covered everything. Very handsome. He's just showing so, off yeah, the camera. Um, we just we really wanted to show you, you know, what an adult iguana is and what they need because as much as I love them, love, love, you know, like I said, a little obsessed, um, I realize that they're not necessarily the right pet for everyone. Um, they get surrendered a lot. Uh, you find them in shelters. A lot of people you know, pick them up as cute little babies in the pet store and then find themselves not really knowing what to do with them after that, you know, if they live in an apartment or they just don't have the means to, to build a nice big cage. Um, it, it, can be, it can be really hard. It can be hard on you, the pet owner, who maybe loves your animal but realize that you can't put them in the best situation and you have to give them up. It can be hard for the animal who maybe has developed a bond with you and then has to be moved around. Um, so I, I don't want to like discourage people from getting iguanas because like I said, I think they are amazing, incredible pets. But I, I want to make sure that anybody who chooses to get this pet is prepared to have this animal as an adult um, and one that may or may not be as friendly as Gus has been in this video. Um, one that may take some work in order to get him to be as friendly as Gus has been. Um, one that's going to live 25 years, hopefully. Um, and that's, that's a salad basically every day, um, at least every other day, of getting fresh greens and chopping them up and adding in your other stuff and doing the pellets and all of that, which, you know, it's, it's not that hard, but it is kind of a lifestyle and you can't just, um, you can't just ignore them and, um, and think that they'll be, they'll be good all by themselves. You know, they, uh, they can be pretty social as you can see and, um, and thrive with, with a little bit of attention too. So, uh, just definitely consider all those things. If you ever thought, maybe I'll get myself a pet iguana. Not, I'm, like I said, I was 10 when I got blue. Not a great pet for a little kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she scratched me. All right. Okay, thanks everyone for rejoining. So I, I warned that we would have bad internet out here and so it just kind of disconnected us. So we're just gonna say a quick goodbye. Um, we didn't wanna just end the video with it totally cut off and no explanation. So um, we were, you were just talking about how great pet iguanas were. And awesome, but they're just also not for everybody and not for every situation. Yes. So, um, you know, consider them Consider them carefully. Uh, consider adopting one, maybe, because there are several that are, you know, in rescues and shelters and stuff. Um, and and be prepared, you know, be prepared to have a nice, big, beautiful habitat for a very long time. <laughs> yes. All right. So, 
I think we'll wrap it up there. Thanks everyone for sticking with us and um sorry for our internet. Yeah, internet issues the whole time. But yeah, <laughs> it was cool. All right. Bye. Bye everyone.